service this morning. Great to have you here as we uh, worship around the Lord's Word. Today is uh, LWML, or Lutheran Women's Missionary League Sunday. So we do have a special order of worship that you have there in front of you. Uh, most of our liturgy is printed out for you. Just going to point out that uh, when we get over to pages 5 and 6 there, we have uh, a lot of communion liturgy, which we did at 8 o'clock. But sort of stuck in the middle there is the Lord's Prayer, so we will be saying that. Then we'll be going on to the League Pledge at the end of page 6. And on the back of your sheet there, our closing hymn is printed out for you, and you can see the tune as well. All of our other hymns will be out of our hymnal, the uh, Lutheran Service Book, LSB. And if you are a guest and our visitor to Good Shepherd, we welcome you in Christ's name. Nice to have you joining your voice with ours as we worship together. And we will begin by singing praise to the Lord the Almighty. That's hymn 790. We will stand on the last verse. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. 
Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. In gratitude for Lutheran women in mission, their years of sacrificial service, and gracious offering for the work of the kingdom, let us bless the Lord. Be to God. Help save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Old Testament reading from this, the LWML Sunday, 
and it's not on the back of your bulletin, so I'm going to read it here. It comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 26, verses 1 through 15. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, the word came from the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Stand in the court of the Lord's house, and speak to all the cities of Judah, that come to worship in the house of the Lord, all the words that I command you to speak to them. Do not hold back a word. It may be they will listen, and everyone turn from his evil way, that I may relent of the disaster that I intend to do to them because of their evil deeds. You shall say to them, Thus says the Lord, If you will not listen to me, to walk in my law that I have set before you, and to listen to the words of my servants, the prophets whom I sent to you urgently, though you have not listened, then I will make this like house and this house like Shiloh, and I will make this city a curse for all the nations of the earth. The priests and prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. And when Jeremiah had finished speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak to all the people, then the priests and the prophets and all the people laid hold of him, saying, You shall die. Why have you prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, and this city shall be desolate without inhabitant. And all the people gathered around Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. When the officials of Judah heard these things, they came up from the king's house to the house of the Lord, and, and the, the prophet said to the officials, I'm sorry, this man deserves the sentence of death because he has prophesied against this city, as you have heard with your own ears. Then Jeremiah spoke to all the officials and all the people, saying, Lord, the Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and this city all the words you have heard. Now, therefore, mend your ways and your deeds and obey the voice of the Lord your God, and the Lord will relent of the disaster that he has pronounced against you. But as for me, behold, I am in your hands. Do with me as seems good and right to you. But only know for certain that if you put me to death, you will bring innocent blood upon yourselves and upon this city and its inhabitants. For in truth, the Lord sent me to you to speak all these words in your ears. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson is printed out for you in our worship folder on page number three. It is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. It will be our sermon text, and we will read the verses together. Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you as is proper among saints. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure, or who is covetous, that is an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, 
For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not become partners with them, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Will you please rise for our holy gospel? The gospel for this morning is in Luke, the 11th chapter, verses 14 to 28. Now he was casting out a demon that was mute. When the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke and the people marveled. But some of them said, he cast out demons by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, while others to test him kept seeking from him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste and a divided household falls. And if Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that I cast out demons by Beelzebub. And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man fully armed guards his own palace, his goods are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks him and overcomes him, he takes away his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoil. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not with me scatters. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person and passes through waterless places seeking rest and finding none, it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. And as he said these things, a woman in the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast at which you nursed. But he said, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and obedient performance of his word. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our confession of faith this morning will be in the words of the Nicene Creed. Let's put it out for you on pages 3 and 4 as we confess together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God, very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us sin and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended to heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again in glory to be judged both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated.
Jesus died so we might live. Amen. Text will serve as base of our message for this morning is our Old Testament, I'm sorry, our epistle reading, Ephesians 5, verses 1 to 9, Dear Friends in Christ. Educators have done studies on how children spend their days at school. How many min minutes spent reading at their desks? How many minutes spent going to the restroom or the drinking fountain? How many minutes sharpening their pencils and so on? Down to the minute, down to a science. Blocks of time devoted to all sorts of things you expect children to do in school. Plus at least one activity we might not expect. Walking with no purpose. That's right, walking with no purpose. Studies have found that in a normal day, a very normal child will spend a certain amount of minutes walking from here to there for no good reason. Curious and interesting. Now we are children of God and as Christians, it is often described our Christian faith as a walk. And St. Paul does that in our text today from Ephesians 5. But the question is, are we walking with a purpose? Paul exhorts us in our text to be walking with purpose. Now we know the fact is, it's not just children that walk with no purpose. People of all ages spend their lives, don't they, walking through life, not really knowing what it's all about. Paul calls this darkness in our text. For at one time, you were darkness. We live in a world of darkness. People entangled by sin, enslaved by sin. We can redefine it, we can redecorate it, we can hide it, but sin is at the bottom of what makes life and relationships difficult, hurtful, sick, dying. Trying to hide this darkness just brings out deception and empty words. These things serve no purpose. Paul lists some of them, filthiness, crude joking, foolish talk, sexually impure, covetous. These are all common in the world around us. So common, but they serve no purpose. Sin can do that. Because of sin, we use God's word only to condemn others or justify ourselves. Because of sin, we ignore or despise God's word and do not worship Him. Because of sin, our relationships with others, father and mother, husband and wife, parent and child, enemies and friends, workers and co-workers, strangers, these are all disrupted and destroyed. None of these actions serve any meaningful purpose. By nature, we are children of darkness with no purpose. Because we cannot free ourselves from this darkness, God in His mercy determined to save us. His mercy shone like a beacon of light when He promised Adam and Eve a Savior from sin. And this light of salvation burned in hope in God's people throughout the centuries until that light exploded like a supernova over Bethlehem when the Word became flesh. When life and death went, each went at each other on the cross, it looked like darkness was winning. But the light of salvation could not be put out. It was stronger than the darkness. The reign of death was ended. So suddenly, you and I see things in a whole new way. We see God for who He really is, not distant or disinterested in our lives. But He's here. He's present. He's eager to have a relationship with each one of us. That is what Jesus lets us see as His light shines in. God's not angry and keeping score on how well we keep His commandments, but He's forgiving. He's not counting our sins against us because Jesus took them upon Himself on the cross. That's what we see as children of light. Now you are light in the Lord. And as light in the Lord, we are now able to walk as children of light. 
As our text says, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. We now have a purpose. We walk in repentance and faith. We walk in forgiveness. We walk with a purpose to invite the world to the glorious light of salvation through Jesus Christ. Today is Lutheran Women's Missionary League Sunday. Lutheran women who also walk with a purpose. These daughters of Zion and many others in our congregation give pennies and nickels and dimes and quarters and dollars in the interest of missions. And you combine our mites with all the rest of Synod and some wonderful mission projects are funded. Walking with purpose. When we all with faithful obedience study the Word of God, when we dwell together in unity, when we faithfully hold the confession of the church in this perverse generation, when we speak the faith, when we love one another, fragrant offerings and sacrifices rise up to the nostrils of our merciful, holy, and gracious God and Father, walking with purpose. You see, every work of the saints, from quilt sewing to helping with funeral dinners, all serves a purpose for the greater good of Christianity. Christ's kingdom is extended in these works of mercy. So may the Holy Spirit call you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Walking in the light of Christ is to walk as children of God with purpose. Amen.
for all those in need, that their eyes would be opened, their hearts would be filled with the joy of Jesus, their despair comforted, their ears open to hear, and provision would flow from the throne of grace to provide for their every need according to God's grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the sick, the suffering, the grieving, and the dying, especially those whom we name in our hearts and aloud. that they would be healed, comforted, consoled, and delivered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we submit these prayers, those spoken and those pondered in the silence of our hearts, along with these offerings for the praise of your glory. For all these and whatever other things you would have us ask, Heavenly Father, we pray for the sake of Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, both now and forever. Amen. We join together as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue our worship with the LWML, or League Pledge. We will say it together, and it is printed at the bottom of page 6, and goes over to page 7. In fervent gratitude for the Savior's dying love and his blood-bought gift of redemption, we dedicate ourselves to him with all that we are and have, and in obedience to his call for workers in the harvest fields, we pledge him our willing service wherever and whenever he has need of us. We consecrate to our Savior our hands to work for him, our feet to go on his errands, our voice to sing his praises, our lips to proclaim his redeeming love, our silver and our gold to extend his kingdom, our will to do his will, and every power of our life to the great task of bringing the lost and the erring into eternal fellowship with him. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated.
I heard somebody's watch, so my sermon got over right at 11. So, uh, just a little tidbit there. I thought you know what? No. Uh, this is Elementary Bell Sunday, and again, we uh, uh, thank uh, the ladies in our congregation for all the many things that they do. Uh, and you can also always be a part of that. Uh, my family and I, we uh, put our change in the mite boxes. If you ever want to get a mite box, please do that. You can always bring it to church, and then there's the big box back there, and you can dump it in there. The ladies also uh, quilt every uh, first Thursday of the month in the uh, afternoon. You can come be a part of that. They have their meetings the uh, last Tuesday of the month. You can come be a part of that. Please look in your uh, bulletin today. Uh, there's uh, LWML. Uh, they're working uh, on World Relief, and they can always use help with that as well. So uh, we thank the LWML for all of the many things that they do. I'd like to thank everyone who was a part of our blood drive this week. Uh, again, we had a very successful blood drive, and uh, we're going to uh, continue to do this every year. So if you are a uh, blood donor, regular one like I am, and many of you are, uh, just remember that in years to come. We'll have it the uh, last Monday in September, and so you can kind of plan your uh, giving of blood according to that. Another thing I want to let you know about is uh, our food gathering. In years past, we've always gathered our food in December and then my family and I have taken it over to Home Sweet Home Mission on Christmas Day. This year it's going to be a little different. We're going to start collecting next week if I remember to get the box out and we're going to collect the first two Sundays through November because on the 15th we are going to Home Sweet Home Mission to serve a meal and we're going to take uh, everything that's collected over there that day. So if you'd like to be a part of that, talk to myself or uh, Angelina, and uh, we will be taking things over there. So that'll be uh, about 10 days or so before Thanksgiving, I think, or maybe Thanksgiving's that next week. So if you want to shop for that type of stuff, you can. They do give out uh, Thanksgiving-type meals over there at Home Sweet Home. If you want to shop for other things, that's fine. That's entirely up to you. All right, the last thing is, uh, we have a couple things in the church that are missing, and I'm just uh, asking for your help. Uh, our north door here, it has a, a key that unlocks the door, and we always set it on the uh, fire alarm. Uh, but that key went missing for the first time in 15 years being in this building. So if any of you, by chance, just happen to stick it in your pocket and take it home by accident, uh, just check that out. Uh, we'd like to get that back. We have another one sitting out there now because Roman, our custodian, that's part of the custodian's uh, handbook that you must have extra keys, <laughs> right? <laughs> and so he put one out there for us, so we do have one. So if you're here and need to unlock the door, we do have that key. Also, there was a small space heater that was in our conference room that has also disappeared. I don't know how uh, that could have happened, but if anyone knows in the building where that might have gone to or for some reason, it left the building, uh, you can talk to me about that. So, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Pastor. And good morning. Good morning. Ooh, that was good. Um, I have no other announcements other than what is in the yellow portion of your, your bulletin. Please check that out so that you know uh, where and when all the upcoming meetings and events are. Mark your calendars for those. So, does anybody else have anything they'd like to announce? Yeah. Seeing none, have a great week serving the Lord. Bye. Bye. Bye.